Hello and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Today we are recreating the Viking mission, which was actually the first rover, uh, well, mission at all that we ever sent to Mars. Uh, you might notice the video is a little laggy. I was shooting at five frames per second at this point. Uh, I had some mods installed, but to do this, I had to keep them installed, even though I updated to point twenty-three. So I'll speed it up to ten times speed. Looks much nicer. Uh, this vehicle looks very similar. Obviously, in the Ker Kerbal universe, the size is very different. Uh, doing our gravity turn. This craft lagged my computer so much. Uh, so I dropped my first stage, throw up a little bit to go up, and I lose complete control of what my ship's doing. I mean, actually, even the maneuver node took forever to drag out because of the lag. But at this point, I can't control where it's turning, so I dropped that stage even though I used like none of its fuel. And I used the third, in, well I guess it's technically the third, unless you don't count boosters as a second stage, at which point it would be the second. But I used this stage to circularize our orbit. I burn a little bit past there and make another maneuver node. Uh, the lag does die down a little bit to about six frames per second here. Um, so I'm going to get into orbit and then I'll go delete some of the parts that are floating around. Uh, so I fly off in the interplanetary stage. And we go, uh, accidentally fly one of them. And we delete all of the debris because, you know, the more modded parts I can get rid of, the less lag there will be, in theory. And at this point I brought it up to 12 frames per second and it stayed that constantly for the rest of the video. So I open up our solar panels, and this does kind of resemble the Viking craft. Uh, I tried to get looks as good as I can. I am not. I, there's no way that in Kerbal you can get the staging and procedures and how it flew and where it landed and how it transferred planetary. You can't recreate all that. You can just make it look kind of like it, and then land it on a planet that looks kind of like it. Obviously, Duna looks like Mars, and that's obviously where we're going. So we get into a nice orbit, um, didn't have to change our velocity much, uh, usually that screws the maneuver nodes if your orbit's too elliptical, it's hard to plan. Uh, I keep having fast forward here, I never really sat down and figured out what a launch window for Duna is. Uh, I guess I could just watch this video, pay attention, and then like, just try to remember where I set up my burn. So we go ahead and we orbit all the way around. I pause to do something, not sure, and then uh, start warping again. And a close up of Viking there. It's kind of accidental. Alright, so make note we are. Oh, we're actually like almost in line when I'm doing this burn. Hmm, that's interesting. So I face the maneuver node and burn. I accidentally moved past the thing. And at that point, I also changed the name of the craft to Viking 1 and set it as a lander. And we have an intersect, so let's go ahead and skip forward to that. And we're entering Duna. So I bring the orbit down. I think I'm going to do multiple burns because I want to land on the light side of Duna. So I can see what I'm doing because Viking was a... Well, it wasn't technically a sky crane, but it did land using rockets. So, well, it uses parachutes and then rockets off of it, similar to what Curiosity did. Except, like I said, it's not a sky crane. And my maneuver node was acting up there. I was actually just shifting my orbit, which confused me, so I just did it manually. Well, not, I guess it's still manually <laughs> either way, but without the node. Ignore the node. Nodes are worthless. So I bring our periops down into the atmosphere and I fly off of this craft. Originally on the actual Viking, uh, this section of the craft, or at least the section that looked like this, was used for the deorbital burn. But I had way too much fuel. Way, way more fuel than I needed and that was mostly because I tried to make it look realistic, not the function, not focusing so much on function. As long as I can get to Duna, I'm good. So we're entering the atmosphere. Uh, I do have 
deadly reentry installed, but for some reason I didn't use a heat shield. I forgot why. Uh, I know there was some reason that it, it didn't clip on right or something like that. But I use this. It's not like I need a real heat shield anyway. It is Duna. So we have some epic, epic dramatic music playing in the background as we enter the atmosphere. Nobody knows what'll happen. Well, we have parachutes, so... I mean, we're going slow enough that we're probably not going to die, but I still have to land it with rockets, so you never know. Anything could happen, even though I know because I've seen it. So I, there I contemplated dropping it upside down, but I was afraid to launch it into the ground. So instead I fly it and crash. So I come back to Kerbal. Luckily it saved it as I was entering the atmosphere. So right now we're, en we're entering again. I'm going to... I kept the time accelerating more because I knew the altitude at which the everything would open. So this time I was a lot more confident in my re-entry, so wasn't so cautious, sped it up. This will go a lot faster. And I will slow it down to one time speed. Like I said, we're shooting at like twelve frames per second, I think. So you can very you can see that in the parachutes. Oh, yeah, that's awful. And this craft actually wants to hang upside down. And at this point, I decided, you know what, I'll just go with it and launch it upside down because then I can do a more... Oh, forgot my SAS. <laughs> and I can burn more straight down. But at that point, I realized that the SAS module I used on this is so powerful that it just turns so fast it's hard to get on the retrograde marker which is what you want to do so you can lose your horizontal velocity and at some point I think I just give up and just try not to hit the ground too hard so I did my best to recreate what Viking looked like uh, I know Viking had three landing legs I know it had boxes off the side it, it had little spheres under the boxes the boxes are obviously the batteries that you can see there uh, it had little spheres that I could have recreated, there's a parachute, recreated with um, monopelt tanks, but I didn't notice they were there until after this video. So extend our antenna, it's in kind of the right spot, it's on top instead of on side, and it's also a square body. But yes, we can do science and we can do everything and where did the parachute go? Well, anyway, it's time to mess around, obviously, because, you know, you can't do science. I did this in career mode, because I didn't have, I don't have B9 aerospace parts in uh, my career yet. But at this point, I take our extra fuel, and I start burning around, and I try to do, I do the landing a second time to prove that I'm competent and know what I'm doing while trying to land. Because that other time I was just like, I just want to touch the surface because it crashed the other time and I don't want to have to do this 30 times. But this time, I am actually making an effort not to have too much velocity going sideways. And this is probably more what Viking would have looked like, except it probably wouldn't overburn and start going back up again. And touchdown, much softer, no sideways velocity, didn't bounce this time, thank god. Or bounce as much. And we burn again, full throttle, all the way over, and screw our orbit up terribly, and just like go all over the place. It's not really an orbit, it's just a flight path. Because we're not orbital speeds or orbital height. But I burn and obviously don't have enough fuel because, well, yeah, this thing only has two of those little donut can uh, fuel tanks. So I aligned to land on one of our landing gear. I could have done two, but I was afraid that I might scrape the bottom of the craft and somehow I survived at 70 meters per second, which does break off one of the wheel, well, not wheels, they're landing legs. But the craft seems unharmed, the main part of the craft. And I check to make sure I haven't turned off no, no I turned on no crash damage because I was pretty impressed that it didn't break. Uh, it did actually damage these landing gear because I was trying to raise them with the gear button and they wouldn't lift. And, yeah, so they're not functional anymore. So roll away because that's what Viking was originally designed for, to roll in low gravity. I'm Con Happy. Thanks for watching.